recording. Uh, and on that, the recording will be sent out along with the slides to everyone who registered or participated in today's meeting. Uh, so if you're joining us just a few seconds late here or maybe the connection isn't the best, don't worry. You will get a full recording of the presentation and the slides a little bit later. Uh, then additionally, I need to go ahead and stream this to Facebook for all of our individuals who watch there. There we go. That should be all set. All right, so appreciate you all taking the time to join. Like I said, we're talking about the GrandStream device management system today, a cloud-based provisioning platform. Uh, like I said, my name is Brian Van Meter, GrandStream Marketing Manager. I have a short presentation for you all today just to give an overview of the GDMS, what it's capable of, and a little bit more information on the roadmap products of it. Afterwards, I'll be taking a dive into the platform itself showing you guys the setup of it, the various features and functions within it, as well as setting up a device from the GDMS, just adding it, not going into the nitty gritty with configuring it, et cetera, but just showing everyone what is available to you. Uh, like I said, a couple more points of order. If you guys have any questions, please go ahead. If you're joining us via the IP video talk link, go ahead and use the Q&A feature that you guys should find on the lower right of your screen. If you're joining us via YouTube or Facebook Live, please go ahead, leave any comments that you have uh, with questions, and I'll go ahead and respond to it there. Like I said, a recording of the webinar along with the slides will be made available afterwards as well. For those who are going ahead and utilizing the chat feature on IP Video Talk today, like I said, uh, go ahead and just use this for just talking amongst each other, talking about various features, different aspects of the GDMS, different ways you may want to go ahead and utilize it. But if you have any questions for me at the end of the webinar that you would like me to answer, go ahead and utilize that Q&A feature. All right. Uh, with no further ado, let me go ahead and just share my screen, and we'll go ahead and just start with a short little presentation. All right, everyone. So like I said, today we're talking about the GrandStream Device Management System, the GDMS. For those of you who are not familiar with it, it's a cloud-based provisioning platform. It's going to be a location where you can configure, manage, provision, offer support for all GrandStream devices entirely from the cloud, hopefully in a way in which you won't even have to go on site hardly ever to be able to manage change settings or anything. This can be done for large-scale deployments for many, many, many various deployments uh, for ITSPs can make use for this too. We really want all GrandStream customers to be able to utilize this uh, new, new service that we're offering uh, to really make solutions as turnkey as possible. So let's just give a quick overview of the platform. So it's a public cloud service. There's no site require, accessible from everywhere, uh, and there's distributed servers across multiple regions to make sure there's unlimited uptime and you see no network lag when you're managing your devices and configuring deployments. So like I said, with the unified deployment and management, it allows you to manage all of those devices located by various quote unquote sites, which I'll get into in a moment, and you can provision these by model, site, or custom groups. You can also schedule tasks such as automated firmware updates, rebooting devices, and various for uh, provisioning and configuration template pushes. It has intelligent diagnostic devices, so you can go ahead and utilize one-click debugging, easily collect system logs, network captures, and trace routes, and I'll show you guys how to do that a little bit later, and analysis diagnosis results as well, which is a feature that's currently in the works here. 
config here, uh, excuse me, convenient configuration and provisioning. So it's really a, a one-step administration for sites to manage configuration of all your endpoints. And you can actually batch configure device SIP accounts and device parameters to really help streamline how fast you guys go ahead and deploy these devices, pre-configure them if you're within the channel, or for your ITSPs, you can set up various different uh, payment plan options, essentially, that would have various SIP accounts associated with them or configuration options. Real-time monitoring and alert, this is pretty self-explanatory. You can get automated alerts via email or alerts via the uh, platform itself. We all realize customer service is key, and if you're able to contact your customer before they even know there's an issue, that's great. That's a huge advantage for everyone. And of course, a powerful API and local deployment. We really want to be able to quickly integrate this into any system and having a more local deployment option with this as well, which is a feature that's sort of coming soon. It's a little bit down the road. All right, so current devices that are supported by the GDMS, we have the 2100 series, 2600, 33 series, 3210, 820, DEC series, and HT series. Please just be aware right now, uh, these are all the devices that will be supported once the GDMS is fully launched, which should be later here in October or early November. It is currently still in beta. So some of the devices here, I believe it's the GXP 2100 series and our GXV Android phones, and I think our, uh, our HT series they actually require a beta, beta firmware to be loaded onto the individual devices before they're able to connect to, um, to the GDMS. Of course, once the GDMS reaches live, those firmware options will be out of beta and live as well, so those devices will connect, no issues whatsoever. All right, and then some of the devices that we're looking on, uh, working on that will be coming soon to the GDMS is GXP 1600 and 1700 series, our WPA10, the GAC audio conferencing series, and the GXW4200, 4500 series, and of course our UCM series of IPBBXs. That's a big one, so you can completely configure and set up those devices, IVRs, any of your call routes, everything from the cloud. Just simply send it out to your customer and it works from there. I'm just gonna take a quick drink of water and we will continue. All right, so device management here continues, guys. Um, so our, there's a few ways that you can go ahead and manage your devices and a few ways you can schedule tasks, firmwares, um, and set up various management roles. So the main thing to sort of familiarize yourselves with, which I'll go into a little bit more detail on later, is the site slash group management. So basically, you'd be able to divide devices into multiple groups and sites and basically go ahead and utilize a grouping template to manage those devices. So basically, what that means, most of you in here right now and most of you watching probably are probably on the installer, integrator, reseller level. You'd be able to go ahead and create sites for each of your customers, custom configuration templates for those customer sites and then push them based on, uh, just based on when those products get there to the customer. They connect to the internet uh, and they would literally automatically pull those configuration templates. No need for you to go on site whatsoever. Uh, when it comes to firmware management, this has an official firmware list and the ability to upload custom firmware as well to all of the devices and upgrade them. This can all be pushed, like I said, entirely from the cloud. No need to go on site. So it really eliminates that really pesky, you know, having to constantly go on site to manage these devices, upgrade them, and really allows you to do it from the comfort of your own business. Tasks can be scheduled for either immediately scheduled uh, or circular, so constantly happening uh, on a set schedule. So this includes account configuration, parameter configurations with the devices, firmware upgrades, device reboots, et cetera. Then of course, multi-privilege manage. 
Uh, basically, all this means here is that you can have multiple individuals on the GDMS with the availability to manage specific sites or specific aspects of your GDMS account. This is really useful if you want to go ahead and give your customers a little bit of control or even if you are a channel partner of ours and want to go ahead and give access to, uh, you know, to your resellers or installers and integrators only for their device. You can actually sort of pre-configure, set up the sites and send it out to them and they can manage it from there as well. All right. Of course, we have real-time monitoring and analysis just to make sure all of your devices are working well and everything is up par for the course. Uh, so when it comes to device analysis, of course, you can go ahead and see online and offline status and, of course, uh, the online and offline by device model just to make sure everything within your network is fully working. Uh, for device dis uh, distribution status, you would be able to go ahead and see the distribution of all of your devices based on your individual sites, your models, or your firmwares. Let me just check something here. I think I... Okay. Still there. Sorry, I just thought I may have been getting a little bit of technical difficulty there. But luckily, I think I'm still here. All right. Uh, and for device working status, You'd be able to see your VoIP account registration status, your DND statuses, call status, and quality. It's going to display an area of device distributions in a map view as well. So if you tend to de deploy more regionally across several locations, you'd be able to see up and down statuses based on a global network as well. All right, when it comes to device diagnostics, a failure alert can be sent out if there are any kind of abnormalities occur, uh, such as a registration failure, low call quality, notification can even be sent out, like I said, really assisting you to get ahead of those issues before your customers even are aware of them. Diagnosis tool to basically help troubleshoot all of these issues uh, from ping, trace route, system logs, packet captures call quality troubleshooting uh, and system troubleshooting. These are two pending features that should be available on later release, excuse me, later upgrade of the GDMS system. An analytic report is pending as well with that. And of course, a diagnostics history. All these reports are stored in the GDMS cloud and can be viewed at any time. Uh, devices can, of course, be batch configured by device SIP accounts as well. It's really easy to go ahead and quickly import SIP accounts from a device such as a UCM. So if you're looking to go ahead and manage devices, uh, manage deployments that are already out there on the field, it's easy to get them quickly added to the GDMS. Uh, batch configuration uh, can also be done using Excel files. Uh, for example, you can allocate one SIP account to multiple devices or multiple accounts to a single device as well. Uh, for when it comes to allocation, uh, you can actually allocate devices in real time with GDMS. So if a device is offline, it will actually automatically allocate those SIP uh, accounts uh, once the device gets turned on. Last but not least, monitoring. This is very important. Uh, the GDMS can basically make monitoring those devices easier and display account registration statuses. So if there's ever any issues, you'll be fully aware of that. Okay, the various ways that you can go ahead and create different group templates for different networks here, everyone. Uh, this can be separated between guests, office workers, uh, marketing, management, for example. There's really a lot of ways you can do this. That's all for internal. For example, it could also be done by various sites, your customers, uh, which is kind of one of the ways I'll be showing how to do it later. Uh, and then group template examples here. You can have network settings, video settings, contacts, using the same phone book, of course, and MPK, uh, multi-purpose key settings. All these can be pushed to these groups as well. All right. Taking a quick drink of water here. 
Okay, everyone, let's keep going. All right, so configuration settings are available uh, for every single one of our supported uh, device models. There's a few different ways to do it. Probably the most common one and the one I will be showing you all today will be done through the web GUI editor. It's an incredibly easy to use interface where all possible options are shown and desired options can be selected and modified. So what this means is you actually don't have to configure every single thing from the cloud, uh, from the GDMS. You can actually choose to only configure and push certain settings. When it comes to the CFG text editor, uh, so you actually can go ahead and push these configuration settings via a CFG text editor. So basically this is a blank interface. Uh, if some of you use it, basically you'd probably be familiar with it, uh, where you can directly enter the supported parameters and values, and this can be used for any kind of special occasion, such as if you're using an additional carrier or just third-party uh, applications. And then uh, device configuration files can also, of course, be copied and pasted here if you'd rather do it in that way. Uh, you can upload the CFG files to a single device, or you can overwrite the original configuration file as well. Then official GDMS updates will ensure that the latest device configuration can parameters are, of course, supported as well. All right, now I'm going to go into deployment scenarios. I'm just going to take one quick moment here just to mention because I see a lot of people are joining mid-presentation. If you have any questions, please go ahead and use that Q&A option at the bottom of the screen via the IP Video Talk portal. And I'll go ahead and get to them at the end of the presentation. Excuse me, at the end of the webinar. All right, so just take a quick look at some of the deployment scenarios here, then we'll go ahead and give you a quick tour of the GDMS, and like I said, I'll be on to those questions afterwards. So installer and integrator, a lot of you right now probably watching this are our installers, our integrators. You're the ones actually putting these devices out on the field. You can go ahead and utilize the GDMS to be able to really help streamline these deployments and make all of your solutions that you use GrandStream for a lot easier from configuring, managing, and supporting these, of course, entirely from the cloud from the comfort of your own business. A lot less on-site time, a lot less traveling. I think everyone likes that. So the main way you'd be able to utilize this, you can organize all of your clients by, quote, unquote, like I said, these sites, which I'll be going into a little bit more detail on. You can pre-configure your customers' deployments prior to sending them out, so all they have to do is put them on top of the desktops where they want them, plug them into the Internet, Then, like I said, configurations would automatically pushed, could be pushed. This creates a perfect turnkey solution for you to utilize, really deploy and go. Uh, configuration templates, so basically full-on templates by model, by group, by site, can all be pushed in mass then this can support customers from the cloud, like I said, solving issues without even having to go on site. All right, if you're an ITSP customer of ours and you're sending out, uh, excuse me, and you're sending out GRPs, for example, to your customers, you'd be able to go ahead and utilize the GEMS to streamline the way uh, you're providing your inter internet telephony services and devices to customers. Everything can be organized, for example, by plans, utilizing the sites option. Uh, Pre-configuration templates can be pushed depending on plans. So if you're offering things based on certain payment levels, you'd be able to easily go ahead and supply that corresponding phone with the corresponding, um, the corresponding settings and features with it configured easily based on this. Templates can also be pushed depending on device, so if it's more of an ad hoc kind of situation, this can be done easily. And then automate alerts, of course, with proactive customer satisfaction, making sure you stay ahead of everything. All right, large enterprises, this is kind of the last one I want to touch on here. Uh, so in the situation that you may deploy plenty of devices for a large enterprise and they would have a robust enough IT team to be able to handle uh, their own internal unified communications network, they'd be able to go ahead and utilize the GDMS 
sort of scale their solutions within the entire enterprise uh, easily. This provides for a happy, larger customer. They tend to be able to want to take everything within their own hand. Uh, IT teams could then troubleshoot and manage their devices from anywhere. So usually in these large enterprises, there's multiple locations. Uh, headquartered IT would be able to go ahead and troubleshoot and take care of problems all from the headquarters slash remotely. And of course, telephony features can be adjusted depending on the departments and use. So these sites, I keep mentioning it, sites, sites, sites. Uh, these sites, for example, could then be allocated based on sales, marketing, et cetera, and have then these devices uh, associated with them. All right. So that's the end of the presentation, everyone. I'm just going to go ahead, switch on over to my GDMS portal here, my Mach 1, and give you guys a quick little bit of a tour of it, uh, and maybe, hopefully, give a little bit more light to some of the uh, some of the features I was talking about here. Uh, so when you log on to the GDMS, and right now, just keep in mind, everyone, this is currently in beta. Should be releasing a little bit later in October, early November here uh, to official. Uh, but once you go ahead and log in here, you'd be first sent to your dashboard. So here's my kind of little example one here. Uh, as you can see, I have two total devices currently uh, configured and provisioned. Uh, luckily, they are online right now. That makes me a happy, let's say I'm an installer, a happy installer, happy reseller. Um, total sites available can be shown uh, with the type of device distributor across them. Of course, I got low amount of devices here, so it is the most impressive statistics, but you'd be able to find it there. Uh, so I have a couple sites here. BB's Pizzeria, uh, that's, that's a new pizzeria that we're going to actually be deploying a new device into today, which I'll be showing you guys how uh, we're going to do that. And BVM Limited, that's a current one of my customers here that I have uh, two devices currently deployed into. So you'll be able to go ahead and see all of your site statistics here, along with any model statistics. So you can see I have a GRP 2613 and a 2614 deployed. All right. So from the dashboard, you can get a lot of useful information. You can even click and look into your device list and be sent right on over to that. Uh, like I said, you could also see device distribution. So if you happen to be deploying to multiple locations, you'd be able to go ahead and see where those devices are located and also be able to see if there's any issues with them currently. As you can see, my only two deployed devices are here within the United States. But if you're someone more around Europe, for example, and you, you tend to deploy across country bounds here, uh, you'd be able to go ahead and see that distribution. Okay. All right. So that's the dashboard. I'm actually going to jump down here, guys, because I've been mentioning a lot to the sites. If you're seeing on the left-hand side, this is the thing that I really want to point out. So sites are a great way for everyone, no matter what you are, ITSP, installer, channel, whatever, um, to go ahead and set up and group your uh, devices. These groups, of course, don't have to be something, for example, like your customers or clients. Like right now, I'm pretending to be an installer. I have, we'll say, two customers of mine, BBM Limited and BB's Pizzeria. Uh, it could be set up, for example, based on uh, certain payment plans, for example, like I said, if you're an ITSP and you want to have, be able to group all these devices based on those plans, you can be able to do that here. If you're deploying, for example, a little bit more complicated deployment and you want to separate everything based on the marketing department, the sales department, and accounting, shipping, receiving, you'd be able to do that too. Um, really, the limit here is honestly kind of your imagination. There's a lot of really great ways to group these sites and group these devices. But just to show you guys a little bit here, you can see I have my devices. There's also a default category, which everything goes to automatically, so devices, if you do not give them a site. So when looking at BB Limited here, we have our devices. So test one, you know, it's GRP, account status, I don't have any accounts kind of associated with it right now. And you can also see if anything is not added on. So an interesting thing too here for BB Limited, you actually can create and add subsites. So for example, I could say 
marketing department. So if you need to get a little bit more detailed with your deployments, you completely can. Save. And you can see marketing department is now nested under BV Limited. So I actually could go ahead and take, for example, this guy here and then move it BV Limited to the marketing department. This is the marketing device. So for example, if they had plenty of devices batched added to this, you would actually be able to manage and adjust them, configure them from here. All right, uh, adding sites, really easy, guys. It's all right here, so we'll just call this BB Corp. Uh, no parent site, new customer signed, we'll say 10.15-2.2019. We go ahead and add them, so you can see they pop up here, grouping everyone. Sites can also be imported. There's actually an, uh, excuse me, an Excel template that you'd be able to go ahead and utilize if you want to go ahead and import all of your customers. You go ahead and download this here. It's a really simple, straightforward template. I'm not going to show you guys. It just shows name, details. It just fills out all the parameters, so you'd be able to just sit down and do that all at once. Remind me later. Thanks for telling me, Windows, I need to update. I'm really glad you chose now to tell me that. All right. Um, so anyway, that's how you go ahead and organize everything by sites. Of course, you can delete sites as well, manage them, rename them. So the next thing I actually want to pop up to here is our device category. So from devices, you'd be able to go ahead and look at the device lists that you have available here. And from here, you can actually go ahead and account configure them. You can set various parameters to them, device diagnostics, and you have a lot of good options here. Operation logs, tra task history, reboot the device, factory reset, all of this can be done from the device list here. You would also be able to go ahead and select multiple and do them. For example, I can select all my devices and choose to just manually uh, update, upgrade their firmware. I can go ahead and have site assignments on it as well. Then here, delete, reboot, factory reset. All right, you can also show this by your models. And then there's a filter option. So if you want to go ahead and see all your devices by site, so let's go ahead and take a look at BB Limited. You'd be able to go ahead and do that. And of course, select them and make any type of configurations that you would need to. Uh, other options here is account status, all device statuses, and then firmware versions as well. So you can actually check if things are on a later firmware version. So for example, is our GRP 2613, what firmware version is it on? If it was on a later one, for example, we could go ahead and select all those and make sure it's up to date. Okay, um, adding device, really straightforward here, guys. So device name, so we'll say it's going to be BB Pizzeria. This is going to be the new device that I just deployed today at my new customer, BB Pizzeria, best slices in town, let me tell you. All right. I'm really going to hope this works. Okay. All right, guys. So as you can see, all you need here is the MAC address and the serial number for the devices. We're going to go ahead and allocate this, like I said, to BB Pizzeria. Save. Look at that. It was successful. We'll refresh our list here. Oops. Oop. All right. There we go. So we were successful. We added the GRP 2612. Uh, it is available here. We can see it's already on a BB's Pizzeria. And you can see if we go down to site, we now have it here as well. All right. Uh, last thing I want to go ahead and point out is the firmware options here. You go ahead and see all the official firmwares available for these devices. And like I said, as you can see, the GXPs are currently here just because, like I said, the GDMS is in beta and it's a beta firmware for the GXP 2100 series. So if you want to go ahead and utilize this right now while it's still in beta, go ahead and download the latest firmware version to your GXP 2100 series. You'll be able to go ahead and manage them from here. Otherwise, feel free to just wait until we launch it whole. Anyway, uh, you'd be able to go ahead and push a firmware update. Uh, or download the firmware if you want to do it more individually here as well, as long as having and uploading customized firmware. Uh, and just because I just want to kind of show it because I figured the question will probably come up. So for account configuration as well, 
it just pops you uh, over to the account tab here, uh, which you'd be able to go ahead and set up which accounts, VoIP accounts, as you can see in the top left here, uh, would be associated to it. You'd have to associate those already to the, uh, to the devices. All right, and setting the parameters as well. If you want to go ahead and edit these configurations individually on the device you can. So as you can see, I'm looking into the only phone with BV Pizzeria, uh, count one, count two. Uh, you'd be able to set everything, of course, from their advanced settings, call settings, SIP settings, intercom, blah, 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 everything you guys are already used to. It's all literally all available here. You'll notice that it's actually grayed out. Uh, which may seem kind of interesting, but like I said, it's because you can actually choose the individual configurations that you want to change and manage. If you want to do all of them, you just click select all here. They're all available and you can go ahead and play around with this as much as you want. Of course, everything from the settings can be edited, call features, outbound, XML applications, your preferences, network settings can be accessed, sys settings, phone settings, and of course contacts as well can all go ahead and be pushed. There's that text editor if you all want to use it. All right. Uh, next thing I want to touch on here, templates. Uh, so you can basically go ahead and create configuration templates based on model by group and then based on CFG here. Uh, so I'm going to have one already ready here, actually, that I was going to send out to BVM Limited. Uh, so basically, I went ahead and grouped all of our devices that were within BVM Limited. And you could go ahead and set up uh, your parameters here. Uh, so something I want everyone to kind of notice here, uh, when you group the devices, you'll have many different devices of different models, essentially. Uh, so you actually see one creating a group template, which is most likely one of the more common ways you'll do it. Um, you know, you can go ahead, you name it. Uh, and then the interesting thing here is that you'll see there's general, DP series, and HT series. This is because all the configuration templates uh, can be able to push, can be, excuse me, can be pushed to respective series. Uh, but they need to be grouped based on the phone's capabilities and what the phone uh, features have. So why basically? So let me give you a little bit of an example here. Uh, so like I was saying, our devices here have a GRP2614 and a GRP2613. Uh, the reason it's grouped like this uh, is because these devices have various different accounts available to them. So let's say I also had a GRP2670 uh, on this, which has a lot of SIP accounts. Um, so you may be asking, well, how can you configure all of these accounts uh, from a group template? Well, that's because even though my current devices only have two, three, four SIP accounts, you'd be able to go ahead and set up all the SIP accounts in the group template how you'd want it, and then the respective features would be pushed that way. So for example, you know, if of course my 2613 uh, that I have doesn't support a, you know, a 10th SIP account, but if I had a GXP 2170 in this group, the 10th SIP account settings would of course be pushed to the 2170. When it comes to the GRP 2613, which I think is only three SIP accounts off the top of my head, these settings would mean nothing to it. Only account one, two, and three settings would be pushed to it in bulk as a result of that. So I hope that makes sense to everyone. Um, from there, of course, everything else would be go ahead and customized. Uh, you would save your group settings. Uh, and this, you know, also goes ahead and says, guys, I know there's definitely features here that are available, for example, to the GRPs that aren't available to the GXPs. Like I said, those features will be pushed to the GRPs when it comes to the GXPs. Since they don't have those features and they don't have those settings, they obviously just won't accept them. They won't do anything, but, you know, it's like chicken noodle soup. It's, it's good, but nothing will happen. All right. 
so once you have everything done there, everything configured, how you want, how you want to be pushed to these batch groups of devices, you go ahead and just push your configuration template by clicking here, and boom, you're done. Everything's finished. Um, you can go ahead and edit group templates as well, or you can even download the configuration file as well. If for some reason you need to go offline and you want to edit these offline, you'd be able to do that here too. Uh, last but not least, of course, you'd be able to go ahead and take a look at all of your group names by general DP series and HT series. Um, you'll notice as well there isn't like a site filter here. This is something we're actually working on adding uh, just to make sure everything is available there. Okay, uh, last kind of thing I want to touch on here is the VoIP accounts. Um, well, last major thing, I'm not going to go super into detail here, uh, but you'd be able to go ahead and add your SIP servers that are available or that your customer would be utilizing here. Uh, everything from the server name, SIP server, outbound proxy, backup outbound, everything would be available here for you to create. Then once you make those actually, you'd go ahead and add the account that you would want, select the relative SIP server, and then you'd be able to go ahead and assign it based on the device, going from your selected model templates to the Mac, and then which accounts you want with it. Of course, you'd be able to add multiple accounts based on whatever model you want, so you'd be able to do this in bulk. Uh, something we're working on as well with this is adding a parameter here to only show the devices based on certain sites. Otherwise, you would get all the devices that are available as well should be available on general release of the GDMS. Okay, uh, last but not least, the task diagnostics and alerts here. Really straightforward when it comes to tasks, you'd be able to go ahead and add based on site, model, or searching direct uh, MAC addresses here. You'd select your device. You also have the option to enter any MAC addresses that you want to do from there as well. So everything can be scheduled from task time. You can schedule it, or you can have the task repeating. So for example, I want to go ahead and have my devices. Uh, we want to upgrade the firmware on my GRP2613, and you can select whichever ones you want. We'll just say these guys. Upgrade the firmware on these ones. Select your firmware ver version that would be available here. And we want to go ahead and have it check in uh, per month. So, you know, we'll say uh, every month on the 15th, you go ahead and select the firmware range or all versions or the latest. It would be there. You can have concurrent upgrades or sequential updates available. And then you can have this done by all devices of this model, or you can select your individual devices that have those models as well if you want them all to upgrade their firmwares at different times. All right. So like I said, the other tasks available here, just to keep that in mind, we have reboot the devices, factory resets if this is needed, upgrade firmwares, update the configs based on models. So if you create new configs, you'd be able to push them and schedule them and update your configs based on group as well. It is really useful if, for example, you have devices deployed and you don't want to just reboot or update them or configure them at a time that's bad for your customer. You'd be able to go ahead and set that up and have this done, for example, at 2 a.m. automatically, uh, saving a lot of time and hassle for everyone involved. Okay, diagnostics, pretty straightforward here. You'd go ahead and search by your MAC address. So I'm going to search the device I just added, actually. Uh, you would go ahead and start your diagnostic. So we'd have everything available here. We do pings and trace routes, and then target our host. And go ahead and run it there. Okay. Last but not least, alerts can be sent out. Uh, so if any kind of alerts get sent out or are made available, you go ahead and figure out how you want to do this. For example, I have one alert here. Uh, my device was rebooted. It's a low priority. I can see the date that it happened along with the time. 
get any additional information, and then run a diagnostic on it if I would like to. Head straight over to that diagnostic screen. Uh, so basically the way you would edit this is you could actually go ahead and edit email notification settings. So from everything here, from account registration failures, factory resets, task failures, uh, you can select which tasks you want to go ahead and get in specific. Uh, device offline can be emailed out along with rebooting devices. And then you can go ahead and select which subscriber, which we'll get into in just a moment here, this gets emailed to. So GS Marketing, that's our entire group here, and that gets sent out to us. And you can go ahead for notification settings. That's essentially where this little bell is here. When you log in, any alerts will be available here. If you want certain ones to pop up and others not to, same thing. You'd be able to go ahead and edit those here. All right. Uh, last thing quickly here I want to point out, and then I'll go ahead and run into those Q&A questions and give you guys back the rest of your day. Uh, so basically when it comes to users, you can actually set up, like I said, multiple users to be able to utilize uh, the GDMS and to utilize your account with various roles and organizations that you can go ahead and create and nest them under. So if I want to add a new subscriber, I'd be able to go ahead and have their name, email, select their role, I only have admin right now, and have which organization they can manage. So if you have multiple individuals within your company that manages various different companies, you'd be able to go ahead and nest them under those companies here. When it comes to roles, pretty straightforward. You go ahead and just have a new role name, description, and you have all the permissions here that you'd be able to edit and adjust. So everything that you would possibly want to be able to customize, you'd be able to do that. And then last but not least, set your organizations. So like I said too, this is helpful if we have any you know, channel partners or distributors in there right now and you maybe want to work with your resellers and be able to use this as well, you of course could go ahead and create uh, user user roles for them and nest them under uh, specific organizations as well if you'd like to go ahead and do that. Okay everyone, so I think that's pretty much everything here to give a good preview of the GrandStream device management system. Uh, I am going to pop back over here, so give me just one second. Stop sharing my screen. Bring myself back on. Okay. All right, everyone. So I hope that was helpful to everyone watching. Gave you a lot of information on the GrandStream device management system, a cloud-based provisioning platform. Should be releasing late October, early November, coming up here uh, fairly soon with all those supported devices I talked about. Before I jump into questions, uh, it uh, is available in beta right now. So if you want to go ahead and jump on there and start giving it a try, start exploring everything yourself, uh, I'm sure a lot of you are a lot more knowledgeable than I may be with some of these uh, features and everything. Please, please, please go ahead and jump on, start checking it out, uh, giving it a try and getting used to the platform. Uh, of course, we would always appreciate any feedback you may have that would make the experience easier and better for you. Uh, that would help us actually go ahead and create a better device. Uh, you can go ahead and go on our forums, leave any feedback there. Uh, it would be greatly appreciated as well. Uh, so for everyone else, if you don't have any questions and you just want to have the rest of your day, please feel free to head out. Really appreciate you taking the time to join me today uh, and learn a little bit more about the GrandStream device management system, something we're extremely excited about here at GrandStream. I hope you all are a lot, ex a lot more excited about it as well. Um, and just to help really streamline your deployments and streamline your experiences uh, with GrandStream. Uh, and with no further ado, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to those Q&As now. There is a lot here, so I'm just going to kind of go to some good ones. Uh, so Blake actually asked a pretty good question here. Is this a replacement for the GWN cloud, or is that 
for a different purpose. So for those who aren't aware, the GD, uh, GWN Cloud is a very similar cloud management system, but only for our GWN access points and GWN networking devices. Uh, Blake, to ask, answer your question, currently, no, it's not. But we do plan on integrating the GWN Cloud into the GDMS. Uh, so everything should be pushed over to there uh, once we get a little bit closer to being able to add the GWNs to the uh, GW, GDMS, excuse me, while wow, it's a lot of acronyms. Um, so basically, of course, we will make sure everyone is, has more than an advance notice before this change happens, so you'll be very aware um, once this is going to happen. But we do want uh, the GDMS in the end to be able to host, configure, manage all GrandStream devices, everything you'd be able to do from your computer through the cloud. Um, so David asks, can you configure a phone in a hybrid UCM zero configuration slash GDMS setup? That's a really good question. Yes, you can. Um, like I said, you'd be able to go ahead and select which options you want to go ahead and have pushed via the GDMS. So the zero config, you will push everything out, and then you could either just manually or have everything update as well from the GDMS as well. Um, Well, then I'll just answer that. Uh, can we get a copy of the slide? So like I said, for those of you who may have joined late, I will be sending out slides and the, uh, the recording of this presentation uh, after it was done. Uh, Daniel, good question. Uh, will there be a tool to have any features that will work with any non-GrantStream devices? Example, Cisco ATAs, ping only. Um, no, there's no plans as far as I'm aware of currently for that. This is a platform only for uh, GDMS, uh, for GrandStream devices. Uh, something we are kind of working on with that, though, is working on third-party API integrations. Uh, and for uh, many of our certifications, such as Broadsoft, Broad Cloud, uh, some of our 3CX, various um, different certifications there, so sort of being able to integrate with the added features that those platforms do provide and having that integrated with the GDMS. Uh, is there a cost to this tool? No, it's not. That's a, a really great thing about it. Currently is completely free um, and plan on just having a completely just free version for everyone to use. Go ahead and manage everything. Um, everything from the diagnostics managing, it's completely for your use. It's just simply to make your lives a lot easier, basically, and your experience with our devices uh, a lot better. Um, can you cluster sites? Custom, yep, Kevin and I showed that a little bit earlier uh, with the parent site, and I'm sure that probably answered your question. You can have parent sites and then nest other sites underneath those. Uh, this is a really good question, actually. Uh, a lot of you have already installed uh, devices at the customer's location, and you might not have access to those serial numbers or MAC addresses uh, anymore. Uh, I know we are currently working on a way to go around this, even if it would be accessing this information and us making it available uh, via, you know, you unfortunately would have to do one more trip on site and being able to make this information accessible via the web GUI. Um, you know, if you happen to be able to have a VPN or be able to go in network from remote, that of course would make it a lot easier, uh, but we are working on a way to kind of streamline the process of having these devices already deployed, already available to you, uh, just because, yeah, it, it is a little bit bulky right now. It's a little bit difficult uh, in that case, because uh, you would, like I said, have to go on site or have everyone write down all of it and then send it to you. Um, it is a little bit of a process, but that's something that's in the work right now. A lot of questions about having this work with the GWN access points, and like I said, it'll, we'll be moving over to the GWN cloud. I have no, just so you guys know, well, I have no 
timeline on that right now. That's the GWN devices. That's something that's like way down the roadmap. So don't think like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be using the GWN cloud if it's going to be moved over soon. The port isn't going to happen anytime soon. So just keep going ahead utilizing the GWN cloud. We'll make sure everyone is aware for it. Um, and you'll get a lot of, lot of advanced notification once things start to move over towards the GW, uh, GDMS. Uh, Marty asked a pretty good question here. Sometimes firmware updates uh, are radical enough that the configs no longer work and need to be redone from scratch. Um, isn't this a risk for auto updates? Uh, yes, in a way it, it could be, but like I said, you would be able to push those factory resets first as well as getting any kind of alerts if there's any type of abnormalities within the device as well. Uh, so as long as you're kind of like maybe send up those email alerts and are very proactive with it and you may have auto updates pushing through, uh, you should be good to go. Uh, you shouldn't run into any issues in that front. Uh, it's a good question. Kevin asks, when do we expect the rest of these devices will be supported? Uh, so what we've heard latest from our uh, management and development teams are working diligently on adding more devices to this. Uh, we should have another update rolling out uh, late Q4, early Q1, and then another update adding another batch devices and UCM integration, hopefully early Q2. Um, but, you know, that isn't anything set on stone. So, you know, just be sure you're keeping an eye on either our social media page or possibly our newsletters. We'll be sending out more information on that as we go when those will be made more available. Uh, can the GDMS cloud be installed on our own cloud server? Uh, so this is actually something I kind of touched on earlier. I believe we're at, we are developing an on-site option of the GWN cloud. Um, so essentially this is sort of an option if there's any situations uh, where network connection really is going to be an issue. For example, if you're deploying a lot of, for example, you know, government deployments will require um, kind of like closed off network, security could be an issue, uh, but that way you would be able to kind of deploy things very easily um, and manage locally. Um, as for your own cloud server, I don't believe so, no. Uh, is this available for customers that want an on-premise system, for example, a UCM 6510 with a GAC and multiple GXPs to manage from a remote location? Absolutely. Uh, like I said, you know, of course, once I have all of those things that you mentioned, which I think is just the UCM series is added to be able to be used with GDMS, you'll be able to go ahead and uh, add those individuals if you want to allow them and give them access to manage those remotely, they can through your GDMS um, platform. You could do that and give them permissions. Uh, so what's last year's slide shows the GXP 2100 series is available, but there's no firmware update showing on the GDMS. Like I said, it, it's currently in beta, so uh, you just have to go to the firmware page and download the beta firmware for the device that you want to have added to the, um, to the GDMS, and it should be available then. Um, and you should be able to add those just by MAC addresses um, and their SNs then. Um, you just have to have that beta firmware downloaded onto that particular device right now. Like I said, once this hits, you know, full release, late October, early November-ish here, um, you know, that'll be, you know, that firmware will be pushed to live, so you won't have to do that, obviously. Um, uh, Ricardo asked, can you transfer everything from GDMS US to an EU server? Um, 
You know, I'm not really sure how that would be done. Let me kind of look into that a little bit more, Ricardo, and get back to you on that. Uh, what about support for the uh, GSC SIP speakers? It's on the way. Um, definitely should be added soon to the GDMS. Uh, we plan on basically all of our future devices that we add should be added to the GDMS, if not right on release, a firmware release later. Uh, just to kind of clarify, nothing to show differently on the GUI when you create your own account, depending on what, you know, if you're a distributor, end user, et cetera, you see all the same stuff as you would, you know, no matter what, when you sign up. All right. So I think that's it. I pretty much touched on most of the uh, questions there. For those I didn't, I'll just kind of look into it a little bit more. We're kind of running short on time here, everyone, and running quite a bit over. Uh, I will look through this group chat and <laughs> kind of go through it. And if there's any spare questions here, I'll answer it in an email. Like I said, I will be sending out an email with the slides. Uh, with the presentation recording and with just a little Q&A section in which I'll answer all of these questions that you have, along with providing just a little bit more extra information on the GDMS uh, if you guys want to look and explore it a little bit more. Uh, I really appreciate you all taking your time on this Tuesday uh, to learn more about the Grandstream device management system. Like I said, my name is Brian Van Meter, marketing manager here at Grandstream. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. If you have any questions, please, please, please feel free to shoot me an email when I send you guys the email with everything uh, and or leave a comment on Facebook. I'll go ahead and answer any questions there too. Take care, everyone, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye.